swamps rising, it's in your eyes, it's in your ears, it's in your mouth, it's in your nose, it's coming over from behind, it's next week, it's last week, it's here, it's now, it's what you wanted, it's what we wanted, it's what we all wanted. So here it is, you've seen it, you ain't seen it yet, you will see it, you're gonna see it, it's now, it's coming, it's here, watch it, now, here. If I were to ask you right now, what does SIT spell, what would your answer be? That's right, sit. That's amazing, look at the size of that spring. They've, they've got torn ears and they've got fur flying everywhere. Oh no, the, uh, am I in a drain? Genitals amalgamate. Have you ever opened a trapdoor in your mind? Walked down the stairs and thought, what the hell am I doing here? Quite often, yeah. Imagine yourself as a chunk or pebble. What kind would you be? Something big and soft or a quartzy little thing? Don't imagine yourself as a mineral that is shaped like you. Don't worry about the shape. If you are a pebble, just imagine arms and belly and bum as one. You are as a pebble, no bits. If you are a staggered biased chunk, imagine yourself as all heel and armpit and box chin. Welcome to High Energy Television. High Energy Television. You sound a bit drunk, actually. I know. Welcome to High Energy TV. Oh, should we watch a bit of telly? Yeah, let's see what's on. Oh, oh, who's that? Oh, it's Ian Mackay. Oh, hello. Hi, oh, yeah. Ed. Here's something interesting to consider. Um, I used to obsess over what George Washington's accent was, and. And I was wondering, did he have an English accent? My father says the theory is that the tendency to draw out things with, which we associate with the English accent, rather, and that sort of stuff, really, <clears throat> really developed under uh, Queen Victoria. It, and it was people emulating the Queen and, and other royalty. I'm sorry about my dinging. You are very popular like a teenager. It never stopped. I I'm telling you right now, us watching you, watching TV, uh, my mum will ring. But then the creature turned around and said, Hi, I'm Racha La Cucaracha. I'm not going to hurt you, am I? Are you food? We've got, full, She's over. we've got full on, this is a full on show. And that David's got a high visual energy jacket. I have. On. He slipped it on, size 12, fits him nicely. Yes, perfect for these high visual energy shows. On a night of high visual energy. Yes, and that's what it is tonight. 
lower your right hand, then lower the chain through the ring in your right hand and let go. I have quite a strict routine when it comes to rehearsing uh, my poetry. And so uh, I'll uh, demonstrate it. You know, if any writers out there are wondering about sort of, uh, discipline and uh, pacing, stuff like that, uh, this is how I would tend to go about uh, rehearsing a poem. It's all about the rhythm. The pinch, the squeal, the smack, the scream, the slap, the tickle, the laugh, the plea, the bump, the thump, the naked lunch, the over-emotional pump of the blood, the rough, the tumble, the grapple, the thrust, the rush, the muscle, the pull, the push, the grasp, the clasp, the panting gasp, the frantic ask, the faster. <sighs> faster. Tension peaks, the flex, the squeeze, the clench, the tease, the sweet release, the stretch, the tremble, the shudder, the fit, the spasm of passion, the bite of the lip, the frenzied rush, the push, the gush, the quiver, the shiver, the flutter, the flush, the fall, the huddle, the wallow, the roll, the hold, the fold, the envelope. That's how I tend to rehearse my poetry. It really does get it into your mind not to make mistakes. Um, and so, yeah, if there's any writers out there wondering, like, you know, my advice to you would be if anybody ever comes to you sort of suggesting advice about rehearsals or discipline. Just tell them to go fuck themselves, you know what I mean? In the beginning, there was only one man and one woman. Now there still is. Man by Jovan. The most masculine aftershave cologne ever. Woman by Jovan. The concentrated essence of total femininity. Experience the fragrances. Then experience the timeless feeling that there is but one man and one woman in all the world. Deep, deep down by Voronoi is the smell of dampness, dankness, the smell of drains, the smell of wet earth. It's being buried alive. It is intense. It's really built around the idea of petrichor, which is a fancy schmancy word for the smell of cold rain on warm earth. It's that smell of a summer rain you might remember playing in when you were a child. Now, in the case of deep, deep down, it's a very uncanny experience because here I am sitting indoors, dry as you like, and I'm thinking about, oh no, am I in a drain? Is there a flood? What's gonna happen? You're completely transported to an entirely different environment. It's delightfully confusing, and that's what I love about perfume is that it can just change your perspective change your outlook, and make you feel like an entirely different person. Sit, or sit, sit, sit. Just sit. Television. This is a high energy show, and if you can't cope with it, get out of the kitchen. Yeah. So, this is my filing cabinet, and this is where I keep all my stickers, or I stick my stickers to. Um, these are really weird things. I don't actually know what these are. My friend Dario gave them to me. Keep like they're some kind of weird, some kind of photo fit. I'm not really sure. Um, they're very strange. Bit of a mystery. I think they came from a car boot sale or a, or a flea market or something. <laughs> David. Yeah. Do you know how like the explorers in Egypt like 
can you imagine like how they must have felt like when they went into the found a pyramid and went into the tomb for the first time and it hadn't been open for like two thousand years and mm. just found all this stuff. Yeah. Have you had, ever had that same feeling being at a car boot sale? <laughs> No, sit, good boy, stay. Miscellaneous metal. Stuff that's in a plastic bag that, that shows me that I've thought of something to do with it. I've actually made one of these already, which is is a, a book kicker, which is basically a thing that fits on my drum stool. So when you play your bass drum, you feel it. Because sometimes you just, you just can't hear what you, what's going on. And uh, so this is off uh, an old aerial attaches attaches to your chimney or whatever your roof, and then it, the aerial goes in there. And so I just thought, oh, that's going to fit on my drum still. And uh, so I'm going to make another one. We could do with the spare. An old drill sees up, but I think of something to do with it. Oh, an old spring. I mean, look at that. That's amazing. Look at the size of that spring. There's the, the rest of that old pan that I made that air. Uh, like that off. Look at that. But then it's then then it's like what can you use this bit for? Guys, it's the sound of my own fucking voice where I'm speaking like a coffee turkey geezer. What will future humans look like? In 150 years, advances in genetic science and in vitro fertilisation allow perceived flaws to be engineered out. Wonky teeth, bulbous noses, squints, hairy backs and mole clusters are things of the past, leading humans to have a more uniformed, unblemished appearance. In 300 years, humans finally shed the last of their ancestral hair. Dispersal of people around the world leads to a homogeneity of skin colour, a kind of taupe. Improved methods for feeding babies causes a Freudian shift away from the desirability of big breasts. Genitals amalgamate. The emergence of a more androgynous and ethnically nebulous people, only really distinguishable by their bad tattoos. In 700 years, highly processed foods making teeth unnecessary, a mouth sucker evolves. To counter the strain from computer screens, eyes become bigger and stronger. The decline of manual labour allows for the development of floppy, less breakable bones. Fingers become thinner and pointier to be better suited for technology's continuous miniaturisation. In 1,000 years, exposure to ever-increasing sun temperatures and dangerous chemicals in the atmosphere results in the development of a protective thick husk. Eyes take on the appearance of reactive lenses, dark in the sunlight, but clear at night. In 1,300 years, brain implants linked directly to the eyes allow people to live in a permanent, augmented reality. Individuals are able to see themselves and all others however they choose. So for the most part, people are unaware of their own real appearance the real appearance of others, or how others are choosing to see them. In 1,400 years, augmentation having fallen out of fashion, a more natural approach to existence is embraced. However, lack of individuality in people's appearances leads to extreme fashions, body modifications and hair pieces becoming de rigueur. In 1,500 years, the TV show Frasier is rediscovered and becomes a global sensation of unprecedented scale. 
Almost 100% of all babies are genetically engineered to grow up looking like characters from the show. This continues for the next 200 years until the human race is suddenly wiped out from an unspecified disease. that needs so many inspirational slogans to get through is probably defective. Um, I was thinking for entertainment they could bring a copy of um, the Michael Mann's The Keep film um, that was filmed inside the mountain in Llanberis in Wales uh, in the 1980s and um, I got to visit the set because we knew someone who was an extra in the film um, the only problem being that on top of mountain without electricity or a DVD player um, it wouldn't be much use um, I suppose I could use the back as some kind of mirror if I needed to um, you know uh, flash at helicopters to try and get saved I could use it to um, Draw attention to my plate. Um, I think it could be quite useful. Or even um, try and start a fire, maybe using the the sun. And um, if only I'd remembered the magnifying glass. Place your left hand, palm down, somewhere between one and three feet from the swivel snap. Thank you. And... Thank you. I don't do that again. to do a very nice one this time. Double flip. <laughs> one more. Come 
down from there. Come on. Now, don't do that ever again. Naughty. You're coming with me. <laughs> Lie down, stay there, and relax. I often think about other languages I don't speak, like, you know, Portuguese and Brazil. Like, I often think, like, what is it? What do the different accents sound like to them? I, I wish I could hear it. I just, I can't hear it. I really enjoyed that Jurassic Park movie. In Washington, here, where I grew up, uh, you go to the grocery store. In Los Angeles, you go to the market. In New Orleans, Louisiana, you make groceries. The noise of a woman orgasming. Is that okay? But, you know, like stuff like a pop noodle sandwich or something, you know, put something in a sandwich, it seems to make it taste better. Like a pie in a sandwich is good. Uh, because pies are hot. If you put them in the sandwich, you can hold them, can't you? Do you know what I mean? Lea de Rien by Miller Harris is a perfume that tells a story. It's inspired by the English actress Jane Birkin's father, and she wanted to make a perfume that commemorated his smell. Dad, you're in this bottle. Oh my God. So it's a smell of her father's pipe, uh, the old house he lived in, an empty chest of drawers, maybe the floor polish, and you put it all into a perfume and see what you get. However, when I smell it, Dad, maybe you need to brush your teeth. There's a little bit of halitosis in there. It is the smell of the stale air in the room that he's been sitting in for far too long with the curtains drawn. Um, any oxygen that's left in there has been passed through his lungs, his pipe, and his bum. Uh, there's a little bleachy smell, it's quite stale. It's very strange, it's very intimate and familiar. Um, it's a smell that is not unpleasant, but it's very personal. And the longer it wears on, the more pleasant and tolerable it becomes. In fact, it becomes quite cozy and musky and, dare I say, sensual. Strange. It started off like smelling the leather chair that Dad was sitting on for hours and hours and hours, perhaps in a pair of old pajamas. But then it does become quite likable. There's a little bit of narrowly in there. There's a little bit of musk in there. I smell... Um, oh, a little bit of vanilla. Vanilla halitosis. Sold. To be picked up like a cat by the loose skin behind your neck. Cats are said to like it. But it's not the same for you, man. True enough, your legs kick straight out. But you don't have a cat's midriff. Just some very confused chinos. And some square-toed loafers. That only now, when they are held up in front of you, do you notice how ugly they are. The shoes of a Cherokee attorney.
standard industry response. What's your favourite TV show? Oh, XTV, without a doubt. dog. Um, I guess he's a sort of a work in progress. As you can see, he's sort of against my easel on drawing board and uh, he's gradually getting more covered in paint. This is the paint um, and the brushes. <laughs> so there was a term here in Washington that was a grit, a grit which is, you don't, no one uses the word anymore, but a grit was somebody who was sort of a kind of a suburban thug kind of person, like a kind of a redneck person. Okay. Um, we call them grits. That, and so if you, someone says to me, like, oh, that guy was like a grit. And I would say that's in the white part of the city. In the black uh, community, when you grit on somebody, that means you give them a mean look. Like you get the gritting <laughs> on them. The day before my 35th birthday, I sat on a bridge in the center of Sao Paulo where I lived and waited for someone to cut the nails on my right hand. I couldn't cut the nails on my right hand at home as the nail scissors weren't left-handed and my husband had just walked out. I set out into the city with the nail scissors and a sign that read, Wanted, manicure for the right hand. woman has cut loads of nails in her life because she knows a lot of children. This man took a picture. This woman cut my nails. She's called Alexandra and her job is a manicurist. She was passing in between appointments when she stopped. She had a box of nail scissors and files and varnishes. We spoke in a mix of English and Portuguese. She sat down and got to work on my right hand. And then she left. Muito obrigado por ter mandado as fotos. Muito obrigado por sua gentileza. Não pensei que você iria retornar. Fiquei muito feliz, viu? Então vem assim para a gente se reencontrar de novo para eu fazer suas unhas, tá bom? E aí a gente vê depois. A gente pode conversar. Enfim, muito obrigada, viu? Até. What's that I can hear? Is it bird song? Yes, it is, because it's spring, and at this time of year, millions of birds migrate from all over the world to the UK. Why do they do that? Do they do that to breed here? Do they do that because there's plenty of food here? No, they do it because they've come to watch Eggs TV. Eggs TV! Could you write me I told you to avoid eye contact. Your eyes are very potent tools. Right, this leave up from Heavy Salad and the uh, Jackie Egg Walking Team. And uh, we're here for the next installment of the Picnic Egg. Live from the Peak District, I'm Andy Votel. And we're bringing poetry and prog rock back into the peaks. Here we have Brent. 
he's hiding behind a copy of Magic Egg by the Barrow Poets. And on this walk, we're only playing egg-themed music at the kind request and invitation of the lovely eggs. So let's go, let's have a look, a little listen to what it sounds like. We've got the picnic player down here. And this is the Barrow Poets with Magic Egg. <laughs> Long, long ago, before time had begun, the moon lost a pimple and a way through space and spun. In the world far below, only water could be seen. It sank into the bottom and it lay there like a dream. The dream was a night jewel moon gift. Magic egg. Time came devilfish, full of pain and fear. Said that egg is cursed, we must get it out of here. Whisper, get rid of it as quickly as we can. So they pushed it up to earth and they left it there for man. For man, man the night jewel moon Magic egg. Magic egg. Brent wasn't lying when he said there was an egg right in the middle of this pie, because there is. What do you think, Daphne? <laughs> I know what's on your mind. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should do a bit of beatboxing, David. <laughs> Sit, stay down. Sit, stay down. Sit, stay down. Often you drop stuff underneath your house. It's like you know. It's not yeah, but gonna people happen, when they it? were making the house, they might have dropped like a penny out of the pocket or something. Well, it's possible, I suppose. You know, we will find out. When I say dominate, I don't mean reducing him to a cowering, intimidated wimp. I mean you must establish that you are above him in the packing order. And finally. Maybe after, you know, 30 or 40 days of no food, maybe I'd have, you know, eaten, I don't know what kind of food I could hope to find on the mountain, on the barren tundra. Um, I'd imagine I'd, I'd lose quite a lot of weight, so I'd need a new buckle belt, so I thought it'd be uh, my um, previously unused Beach Boys buckle belt that I saw for sale and thought at the time seemed to be a good idea for me to buy it. Um, and they had no, no real use for it, um, but I'd, I'd imagine I could do with a new buckle belt after losing all that weight, so um, it's uh, that Beach Boys buckle belt will finally come in handy on the mountain. Also good to um, draw attention to passing helicopters or paragliders. Oh, 
Hammer of the Gods. Brilliant. Lots of animals to see. Hi, I'm Dr. John Cooper Clark, and uh, you're watching Eggs TV. Middelijk terug, een beest. Remember when you knocked in that fireplace and you found that dead mouse? Yeah. Well, I've still got it actually. Victorian mouse. Yeah. Well, you know, I wanted to age it. I reckon it was 100 years old. I didn't know what to do with it. What do you do with a dead mouse? You can't just put it in the bin, can you, when it's lasted like this long? <laughs> Woad Paint by Boudicca. It's invisible ink. Oh my gosh. Oh, but the smell. So first of all, woad is a plant extract that people in ancient tribes in Britain used to smear on their faces to freak out the enemy. And Queen Boudicca, who was the lady that ran the show back in the olden days, she was the one that led her tribes into war against those pesky Romans, and they would smear their faces with this bright blue vegetable matter to make themselves look otherworldly and fierce and freaky. Well, this is the modern day war paint, and it certainly smells fierce and freaky in a lovely way. So I'm smelling, the blue is gone, but the smell remains. Sort of the smell of the forest floor. It's a little vegetal, it's very mineral, and it also is leathery. So it kind of calls to mind maybe this battalion of fighters who were just hiding in the bushes and dropping out of trees and surprising the enemies. But the point is, is that this is modern war paint when you're going into battle in the hustle and bustle of the real world. Time for me to take down my enemies. <laughs> the tiles against your face must have been cold. <laughs> sit. No. Sit. Good boy. Eggs TV. Have you seen the shit that the Egyptians mummified? I have, yeah. I've seen programs on it, I've not seen it close you know, up. Like well, I've seen some close up in a museum. Fish and stuff. No. You did? I'm telling you. Cats I've seen. Yeah, I've seen cats, but I've seen fish as well. I don't think I've seen fish. It's like saying you've seen an insect, a mummified insect. Mm. It? It's a thing, a mummified fish, I'm telling you. Right. Look it up.
Good. Boom. Like probably a caveman spot, wearing a watch, isn't it? But they probably spot the hammer marks where we've been savagely trying to uh, reveal the delights inside. But before they could hide, someone came in the kitchen. It was Mother Billy. And you always want to end the practice session on a positive note. Oh, brilliant. What do you think about the show today, Halls? What show? What do you mean? It's like, you know, the last last uh, half an hour. What? Oh, for God's sake. It's great. Anyway, see you next time. Oh, Dave is doing a little bit of presenting there. <laughs> Don't keep repeating sit, 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 sit. Sit, 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 sit. Sit, 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 sit. Oh, what have I done? Does this look pretty? And uh, I suppose the bag itself is going to come in handy as well. If, um, maybe uh, collecting what, uh, for example, rainwater. Thank you very much.